All right, well, it's another bright, sunny morning for me to get a lot of work done. But first, I'm gonna take you on a little journey to show you exactly what I'm gonna do with the bees, because the bees are back, but they're not the same bees anymore. They're different bees. As far as which bees they are, they are now yellow jackets. They are no longer bald faced hornets. I'm going to climb up on the roof and I'm going to spray that area with deterrent. I mean, it's technically an insecticide, but it's also deterrent. So we, we ended up getting one yellow jacket that got through our attic door into the house about two days ago. We still getting in from the same spot, oh, just different, different type of wasp. Woohoo, here we go. I'm up here spraying, but one of the things I'm doing is I'm testing it out first just to see if, if I spray a little bit, if I'm going to irritate anything and it's going to come flying out, which in that case, I'm going to climb down, I'm going to place my ladder over here on the deck, and I'm going to spray a further stream to hit the spot that I want. But if nothing's coming out, then I'm just going to load up right where I am here so that I can make sure that it's nice and soaked, especially near the entrance. That should serve as a pretty good deterrent at this point now that I've sprayed it down pretty well. There's a couple other spots I want to just check on just to make sure that they're not building up inside the wall because one of the things you don't want to have is a nest building up inside your wall because they generate moisture, they generate heat. And so if they're in your walls and they're next to the wood or the drywall, they will eventually saturate the drywall because drywall is permeable. And what eventually happen is if I don't get rid of them and the hive gets big enough, my wall can cave in, and then my whole house will be full of like hundreds of wasps and bees, which I really don't want. I think we're good. So on another note today, I gotta line these up, make sure that I'm cutting them short because they are they are long by a couple of inches, so that they meet the top of this plate, the bottom of this plate, and they don't interfere with anything else. So I've got to cut probably like 60 of these. All right, so I got to cut these down about two and three quarters of an inch. The other side is beveled, so I want to leave this side so it looks nice. So I'm just going to chop them off like that. So I've clamped down one side, and I'm going to clamp down the other side. And then I'm going to clamp down a couple pieces of wood here. I can come in here with a piece like this, set it down, hit that, know that it's always two and three quarters of an inch and just keep going and pounding through all 65 of these so I don't have to mark out with a tape measure every single time I've got to measure two and three quarters of an inch to cut off the ends of these. I'm essentially creating what's called a jig. Okay. I lined up this cut as best as I could with the blade for three inches. And what I've done over here is I've created a back wall. I've clamped down my, my saw to make sure that it doesn't move too. So right now I am all set to start cutting through 65 of these rather quickly.
my next little cutting project before I start attaching stuff to the playground today. I want to create some more braces, some angle braces here. I've marked out a piece of two by four that I'm going to cut some angles on, some 45 degree angles, so I can try to fit this up nice and flush and then screw it in and do that for 16 spots today. I have to adjust my saw to rotate it so that I can get it to cut at the angle that I wanted at. Quick release chuck here to help me rotate the deck. And down here I have angles. I've got one angle here that's gonna be coming in this way. I've got another 45 degree angle coming in this way. Brace here, I'm gonna slide that in so that it's easier for me to hold because I don't want to get my hands too close to this, this particular cut because because the blade's coming down pretty close to where I want to handle this piece of wood. And check to see if I'm, my cut's gonna be straight. And I want it to be just slightly to the right of my line because the blade itself has a thickness. And if I cut directly on the line, I'm gonna mess up my lengths because I'm cutting too much off. So I wanna just make sure I'm cutting just to the right of that pencil mark. I like that right there. So I'm going to tighten this down and put my earplugs in. See if I can take my coping saw to it, maybe. So now I've got to rotate the deck the opposite way. So let's go see how this fits over here. See if it does what I need it to do. So here, yeah, that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. I like that. That looks clean. I like it. So I'm going to use this and use this as a tracing block for all my other pieces. And then I'll go cutting them all down. little accent pieces and a little extra strength this whole thing there Got them here so I had to do something a little different here because this is for the chalkboard plywood that I got to put up and so I kind of double mounted them in the same direction just so I could at least have two and I did that in both both corners over there So one of the nice things about this side and mounting these balusters is that I've marked everything out four inches on center. So at the top, I just line up the middle of this post with the mark on the top and just clamp it in place and screw it in. Also underestimated how many balusters I needed. Bought 65. I actually think I need closer to maybe like 80, maybe 75 or 80. So I'm probably gonna have to go back to the store and get some of those, yeah.
right, so that's the whole side done.